All right, so you're going to learn how to use the pen tool, and the assignment in Canvas is called Pen Tool, and we'll be working with this Pen Tool Pair AI, which is an Illustrator file. So if you go ahead and click to download that, then once it's downloaded, you should just be able to open it up, and there it is. So this is the Pen Tool, and the thing to know about the Pen Tool is when you click once and let go, it places an anchor. It even says anchor in green, and then you've got this kind of a string that comes off of it, and if you click and hold with the mouse, so I'm still holding, I haven't let go, I can then drag it out and it creates a curve, just depending, so if I'm dragging kind of down and to the right, it curves this way, the more I kind of turn it, the less curve, so you can see that just depending on how far and which direction it goes is how the curve is going to be shaped. Then when you let go with the mouse, you can now do your next point. And I could go ahead and I could make this curve, but if I didn't want it to be curving the direction it is or the amount that it is, you go back to where it says anchor and you click once and then it goes back to being a straight line. And then I can click once and let go or I can click hold and then drag and it will curve. And then when I'm done with everything, I can actually go back up to the first point that I drew and click once and I've made this lovely little teardrop, which is cool. I can also use this direct selection tool to come and click on these handles, as they're called. And when you change a handle, you change the curve. So if you find that after you've drawn something, you just don't quite like the angle of the curve or the size of it, you can click and hold, and it's going to change it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and delete this. And we're going to use the pen tool to create this pair. So you'll see that they're kind of fuzzy, but it says A, and there's this little anchor spot for it. And then these are kind of representing the handles. So first on this one, I'm going to click hold with my mouse and drag out to these handles. And then I'm going to let go. Now I've got this curve. I'm going to go to B, and I'm going to click and hold, and then let go. Now you'll see that it is curving too much, so I need to go over to that last anchor point I just drew, hover over it so I see the green word anchor, and I'm going to click once, and now it's going to be straight again, and now I can go to C, and I can click and drag. Now with this one, maybe it's just me or whatever, but I've never been able to get this to quite perfectly match. So I'm just going to go and you know click and drag, to get it as close to that bite mark as I can. So I'm more interested in following the lines. Okay, so I didn't want it to be too pointy, so I just did it like that, which is okay. Once again, it is too curved. It's curving the wrong direction. So I go over where it says anchor, click once, let go. Now I can go to D, click and hold, drag kind of to the left with my mouse, and match up that little bite mark as well as I can. Once again, it's not perfect, it's okay though. No bite mark is the same anyways. Too curved, because I don't want this lump, so I'll go back to where it says anchor, click once. Now I can go to E, click, hold, drag, and let go. Once again, too curved, so I go back to this anchor, click. Now I'm gonna go to F, click and hold and drag, and let go. Now with G, I actually don't need to straighten it out because it's in the direction of the curve that I want. So I'll go to G, click and hold, drag it out. It's not perfect, but I can get it pretty close, and let go. Now I can go down to H, click and hold, and I really only need to drag this one a tiny bit, let go. Come down to I, Click and hold and drag till it matches. Great. Going to J, click and hold, drag it out, let go. And then I'm going to come to A and click once. And now I have my pair all connected. So at this point, I would go to my selection tool so that I can actually select this. You want to click on the path. And then this box is the fill. So remember, that's going to be the inside color. 
now you might see that you don't have any. If you do have colors, that's great, but sometimes weird things happen, the colors disappear. There's a few things I can do. I could click here, for one thing, that's gonna bring in some color, but it still doesn't bring any here. So one thing I can do is I can come to this, swatch libraries, and there's a bunch to choose from. Foods is always a good one. They even have one called fruit. And you just have to click on this folder so that it highlights them in white. And once it's highlighted them in white, you'll come up here and you'll see that those libraries have been added. So I'll just choose a few colors for my pair. I like to use swatches because it helps me stay consistent. So I want some greens and I also want a brown for the stem. And I think that's enough. So We need to apply a radial gradient to this pair though. So I'm going to come over to the gradient where you can expand your whole panel. And I'm going to click here. And it makes it black and white, but then you just double click on these gradient slider boxes. And I can come down and choose a color. Now, if you don't like any of the colors here, once you've chosen just any color, you can go back up and now you have your color bars. If you don't like one of the swatches you've chosen, but I'm perfectly happy with this one, so. And then I'll change it to kind of a yellow. So we've got a yellow green pair. I can move this so that it's a little more on the green, less on the yellow. And then I'm gonna change it from linear to radial so that it's got this circle. And if you don't like it, like if I wanted it to be green on the outside, I can just click and drag to switch these. And there we go. Once you've actually added a gradient to something, you can use this, the gradient tool. And now I actually have control over, and I can click on this to make it kind of smaller, make it bigger. So you can see there's different things you can do to change kind of the location and the size and everything of your radial gradient. So click on this and it would make it kind of oval, which is not what I want, but it's an option. Shrink the whole thing, and I like that. So I'll call that one good. So next up we're gonna do the leaf. And the leaf is using the pen tool. This is the guide for the leaf, so we're gonna go A, click hold, and drag, dragging it upwards. Then I come over to B, click hold and drag down till it kind of matches that curve. And then imagine there's just a pretend C over here by this black square. So I'm gonna click once and let go on that one. Then I'll go ahead and go to A, click and hold, drag up. And then, you know, you can make your leaf bigger, smaller, wider, just something like this that makes it kind of leaf shaped. Go to my selection tool, which allows me to rotate it, move it around. And I'll go ahead and put the leaf there. And I wanna change the gradient colors. So this is when I might wanna come here because I don't want it to be the exact same color as my pair. A little more yellow. Eh, it's okay. I honestly still don't love it. But there you have it. And I could switch it back to linear if I wanted. And that works. Okay, so there's my leaf. Next up, we're going to do the stem. So with the pen tool, this is the guide for the stem. You almost don't need it, though. So if I click, and I'm going to drag this way once, Come down to B and drag. And I've kind of reversed it, but it doesn't matter. Come up to A, click and hold. And then just kind of depends on how, which direction. So you can see that that would not be much of a stem, but if I click and kind of pull it down and in, it gets kind of pointed. So really the stem is, is less picky. It's two points and then you click and drag and move it around to kind of make it the way that you want it. And I'll rotate it so that the kind of pointier end is there. And you can use the directional tools on your keyboard to kind of nudge things over a little bit. Now one thing with these, all of these things I've drawn, I don't want any stroke. I don't want that outside line on it. So I'm gonna click here 
and set that to nothing. And I'm going to do that for the pair. So click on my pair, set the stroke to nothing. Same thing with my leaf. I'm going to set, oh, come on, leaf. There we go. And set the stroke to nothing. That way there's no black line around it. Okay, so now I'm going to create an arrow shooting through this pair. So the first thing I'm going to do, though, is with the pen tool, I'm going to come over here and kind of create the hole where the arrow is going to come in. So I'm going to click once and just let go. And then on the second one, I'm going to click and hold and pull down and just kind of create a little crescent. And then, because I don't want to connect this, I actually just press the escape key on the keyboard. And now it is just a crescent. So I'm going to select this. I want no fill on this one. And then I just want to choose a line color that I'm actually going to be able to see on my pair. Whoops, see I'm back in. This is fill, nothing. Stroke, I want to have. So I could do yellow maybe and maybe increase the stroke by just a two. And there's the little hole. Now I can use my pen tool to create the arrow itself. So I'll just start here, click once, let go. Then go to here, click once, let go. And press escape. So now I just have a line, which if you select it, because right now it's blue and it means that has nothing, like it's not there, but it is. You just select it. I'm going to give it oh, a brown color, increase the stroke width to maybe four or five so that it looks like an arrow shaft. And if I need to, I can just use my arrow tools to move it over a little bit. Okay, now with the pen tool, I'm going to do the one coming out the back. So try to kind of make it so it's going the same direction. Click once. Make sure you don't connect with the actual pair. Just go right before it. And click. And my settings didn't stick, so I'm going to have to go back to here. Select the line itself, change it to that brown, and increase it to, I think I did four. No, I did five. And now I just use my move arrows to get it so it's actually up there against the pair. OK, so there's the arrow shaft. Now I'm going to use the pen tool to create the arrow head, which is right here. So I'm going to click once and let go. Then I'm going to come to the other corner. I'm going to click and hold and drag. Let go. It's too curved, so I need to click on that anchor point. And then I can come up to here and click once. And then go back to the first point so that it's all connected. Select it, and I'm going to give it a fill. Sure, I'll just stick with the brown. And go move it. You might need to rotate yours a little if it's the wrong angle so that it looks like it's an arrow. Last thing to do now is the little feathers. So I'm going to take, I'm going to click once and come to here, click, click, escape. So three little clicks there. Kind of, I made it, I made a triangle that I didn't complete. I didn't complete it because I don't want it to be a triangle. I want it to be a feather. So no fill. And then the stroke. And you could increase the stroke width a little bit. OK. So there's my feather. And at this point, I would just do Control-C for copying, Control-V to paste it, and put it there. Control-V again. And just make sure you have at least three. I'll probably do four. And there's my feathers. Now I'm going to go ahead and just select this background so that's the only thing selected. Press delete so that the pair is all by itself. File, export as a JPEG. And then this is what you turn into Canvas, and you are done. So I'll go ahead and. I'm going to export it to my downloads, but you will export it to your student folder. Default settings are good. OK. And you are done.